This was shot with a 50mm lens and a 12mm macro extension tube. All you gimbal and steadicam users out there already know how difficult it is to get smooth, accurate shots with long lenses. The tighter the shot, the less forgiving imperfect camera movement is to keep the subject in frame. So how was I able to pull off the tightest parallax shot of them all, a macro parallax? If you don't know what parallax is, it's when the camera slides in one direction, but pans in the opposite direction. This shot is technically an orbit shot, which is kind of like a parallax, except the camera is circling around the subject. Regardless of what move you use or what you want to call it, the effect is the same and it is super cinematic. The point of interest remains in one place while the surrounding environment seems to move around it. Wide angle lenses are perfect for this. In this shot, since the point of interest is pretty much everything, any botchy camera movement will go unnoticed. But with tighter focal lengths, as soon as you move off target, it's over. You gotta retake that shot. Now since the 50mm lens and extension tube combo is giving us a macro shot, maneuvering the gimbal in a way that's going to give us smooth, consistent focus is pretty much next to impossible. So we're going to use a tripod instead. Stay with me here. All right, in order to maintain focus, it's going to be way easier if we keep the camera still on a tripod and then rotate the subject instead. And the way we're gonna do that is with this, a motorized turntable. But we're not done yet. Now we could just turn on the turntable, but that isn't enough. It's going to be too obvious that the subject is just spinning in place. What makes the orbit and parallax so cinematic is the background moves with the camera. But since our camera is stationary on a tripod, we can't move the background. Or can we? We're going to manufacture a background with this sound panel. So now we have to decide which direction this moves in order to make the fake camera movement make sense. If our subject is rotating to the left of the frame, that means the camera must be orbiting to the right, which must mean that the background also has to be moving towards the right. All right, I know that may have sounded confusing, so let's take a look at our examples from before. All that means is that with an orbit or parallax shot, the background will always move in the same direction as the camera. Now, you're going to have to experiment with the speed of the background, but there are no rules here. Now, with both the camera and subject being stationary, we want to provide as much visual cues as possible to create the illusion of movement. And we'll do that with this cheap-ass photography light. Take off this clamp that gives me some cellophane gels. And we're going to create more movement in the shot by moving the key light from one side of the subject to the other side. By doing this, we're telling the audience that our camera now has a different perspective of the subject and the light because it's been orbiting. I don't really know if that made sense, but if anything, it makes the shot look dope anyway. All right, that should do it. Now I got my blue fill again to contrast with the red wall that's behind me. Anyway, that's it. That's how I fooled you all into thinking that I am a macro gimbal god. But seriously, this was a lot of fun. This is what my channel is about. It's about utilizing low budget tools to get some pretty dope shots. Because let's face it, not all of us could afford fancy camera gear, but we all wanna stay creative. Anyway, now that it's 2020, a brand new year, I hope to be bringing you all kinds of videos just like this one and share what I learn the deeper I get into camera work. Thank you so much for watching guys, happy new year, and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.